Hello everyone. So in this video, I want to solve a question in which we have um, in this circuit, we have the mutual inductance as you can see. So the problem asks us to find I of X using mesh analysis. So as you can see, I of X is the current passing through the um, 1200 milli, milli Henry, um inductor. So what we have to do in this kind of problems, first of all, we can just um, transfer or convert all our um, elements into impedances because we have the inductance and capacitor capacitance. So then when we have the impedance, we can easily apply the um, algebraic like operations on the circuit. So we know that the impedance for the resistor will be the resistor itself. So we do not do anything about the resistors, but for the inductor and the capacitor, we have to find their impedances. So the impedance of the capacitor, we know that it is equal to one over C J omega, and the impedance of an inductor will be J omega L. So what is omega? We have to go back and look at our sources that we have and then find omega through them. So we can see that we have I of S and V of S as our current and voltage source. And in both of them, we have omega equal to 600. So from here, we can say that, okay, omega is equal to 600. So first, let me write the impedance for each element individually. So the first element will be the inductor with the inductance of 800 millihenry, which is equal to 0 0.8 henry. And then the Z for this inductor will be equal to 0 0.8 multiplied by omega multiplied by J. And we're going to have 480 J O. Then for 1200 millihenry, which is equal to 1.2 Henry. The impedance here will be equal to 1.2 multiplied by 600 multiplied by J, and we're gonna have 720 J for the impedance of this inductor. Then we know that the mutual inductance is also an inductance, so M is equal to 600 milli Henry, which is equal to 0 0.6 Henry, so the impedance of M will be equal to 0 0.6 multiplied by 600 multiplied by J, and we're going to have 360 J. So these are the uh, impedances of our three inductances. So we have a capacitor left, and it is 12 microfarads. So from here, the impedance of this capacitor will be equal to 1 over 12 multiplied by 10 to the negative 6, which is the micro, multiplied by 600, and then multiplied by J, and that will give me minus J138, and the negative sign is because we have J in the denominator, so when I bring it to the um, numerator, we're going to have a negative um, J. So now what, what we have to do, we can make the circuit like simpler, so we can apply our mesh analysis to the circuit. Okay, so the first thing is that, as you can see here in the circuit, we have a current source in parallel with a voltage source. You can leave it like this, but since we want to do the mesh analysis, in my opinion, it's easier to like use the superposition and have a voltage source instead of the current source, and that would be a little easier in terms of the analysis. By that, I mean, so we have a current source, I of S, in parallel with a resistor. And using superposition, we know that this will be equivalent to a voltage source, V of S, in series with that same resistor. So, and V of S will be equal to R, which is 200, multiplied by I of S. All right, so this is an equivalent to the current source in parallel with the resistor.
Okay, so I will redraw my circuit in order to do the uh, mesh analysis. So we're going to have the resistor of 200 ohms in series with a voltage source. And my voltage source here, which is R multiplied by I, I know that I was equal to 4 cosine of 600 T. So now if I multiply this by a 200, I'm going to have 800 cosine of 600 T, and I'm going to write it as 800 with the angle of 0. Okay, so this is the first part of my circuit. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to have my um, inductances with their um, dependent voltage source that is being induced by one another. So by that, I mean when we have two inductors, we know that when we have a coil and we have a mutual inductance, it means that one of the coils will induce a voltage to the other coil as an effect of the current that is passing through the first coil. So for example here, when I have this 800 millihenry and 1200 millihenry, I know that there is a voltage being induced in this inductor of 800 millihenry as a result of the current passing through the 1200 millihenry. Okay, so both of these and, and this way we can get rid of that like mutual inductance in between. So we can have a simple circuit to do the analysis. So by that, I mean, we have a voltage source, a dependent voltage source. Why is it dependent? Because it depends on the current that is passing through the other coil. So we have that inductance of, now it is 480J as its impedance is. Then we have this inductance, and I know that I have a dependent source for this inductance as well. Why? Because we have a current passing through the other coil, which is that 400J um, impedance. So this is this part of my circuit. Then we have 720J. And then I'm going to have my capacitor, which is minus J138 and the resistor of with the amount of 150 and here I'm going to have my V of S which was 110 with the angle of 30 degrees okay so let me make this a little bigger so what we have to do right now is to find the value and the polarity of these two um, dependent sources, dependent voltage sources. So we go up here. If I say that I do have current I1 like this and current I2 like this, first of all, let me write I of X, it's clearly equal to I2 minus I1, uh, sorry, I1 minus I2. Why? Because of the directions of the currents that I have been defined over here. Okay? So, the dependent voltage source that is in series with the 1200 millihenry is induced there because of the current passing through the 800 millihenry, right? So what is the current passing through the 800 millihenry? You can clearly see that the current is I1. So the current passing through this 800 millihenry is I1, okay? So the voltage that is being induced in this inductor over here is an effect of that I1 passing through 800 millihenry, okay? And since we know that V is equal to Ri, so that voltage which is being induced here, here, that is equal to M and the current that is passing through the other coil, which was I1, okay? So what is M? M is 360J I1. So this is the value of this voltage source. Okay, now for the polarity, I have to look back at the 800 millihenry. So the current I1 is entering the dotted terminal of the inductor, right? So since it is entering the dotted terminal of the inductor, then the dotted terminal at the 
other coil at the other inductor will be the positive polarity. We'll have the positive polarity. So here I'm going to have positive, negative. Why positive is down? Because I see here that we have the dotted terminal at the bottom of the inductor. Okay. Now for the other um, dependent voltage source, which is the voltage source being in series with 480J, if I go up here, that voltage source is as an is an is induced there because of the effect of the current passing through the 1200 millihenry. What is the current passing through the 1200 millihenry? You can see it is IX. What is IX? Is I1 minus I2. Okay. So the value of this um, dependent voltage source over here will be M, which is 360J. I1 minus I2. Okay, now for the polarity, if you go up here and look at I of X, which is equal to I1 minus I2, you see that IX is leaving the dotted terminal, right? So it enters the inductor, but it is leaving through the dotted terminal. So the dotted terminal at the other inductor will have the negative polarity. And you see that the negative polarity should be on the left. Okay, so now I have everything ready. I only need to write two KVLs here for these two loops in order to find I of X. And I know again that I X is equal to I1 minus I2. All right, so let's do that together. So for mesh number one, we see that we have uh, 800 with the angle of um, zero. So 800 with the angle of zero, I'm gonna just write it as 800 over here. That is equal to 200 I1 minus 360J multiplied by I1 minus I2 plus 480J I1 plus 720J I1 minus I2 minus 360J I1. So what I did here, I only did a typical basic um, KVL, just wrote a basic KVL through this mesh because everything is ready for writing a KVL, right? The algebraic operation. So if I factor out every, uh, all the coefficients of I1, I'm gonna have 200 minus 360J plus 480J plus 720J minus 360J I1 plus the coefficients for I2, which are 360J minus 720J I2. Right? So from here, I'm going to have 800 is equal to. So in the first parenthesis, we have 720 and then two negative um, 360s that will be cancelled. So we're going to have 200 plus 480J I1 uh, minus 360J I2. So this will be one of the equations that I have. Then the second equation will be the equation that uh, I have to write a KVL in mesh 2. So in mesh 2, if I start, I'm going to have um, positive 360J I1 plus 720J I2 minus I1 minus 138J um, I2 plus 150 I2 plus 110 with the angle of 30. So 110 with the angle of 30, if I convert it to rectangular, I'm going to have 95.26 plus 55J. That is equal to zero. So again, I'm going to do the same operate uh, the same um simplification as I did for the first mesh. So 
I will co um, factor out the coefficients of I1. So I'm going to have 360J uh, minus 720J. Uh, that's the only coefficients for I1. Plus, now for I2, we have 720J I2. Oops, sorry. 720J minus 138J plus 150 I2. And that will be equal to minus 95.26 minus 55J. And then if I simplify that more, I'm going to have minus 360J I1 plus 582J plus 150 I2. And that is equal to negative 95.26 minus 55J. Okay, so here I'm going to have my second equation. Now the only thing that I have to do is to find I1 and I2 while I have two equations and two unknowns, so we're good to go. So what I recommend doing here, because we have like a little um, big numbers, we can use MATLAB in order to um, solve this equation. So the only thing that I'm going to do here is to write these two equations in the matrix format, and then we know how to do it in MATLAB. So we have I1 and I2. Let me make this a little bigger. Okay, so the coefficient for I1 in the first equation is 200 plus 480J. The coefficient for I2 is minus 360J. And then the constant is 800. Now down in the second equation, we have minus 360J as the coefficient of I1. And then we have 582J plus 150 as the coefficient of I2. And then we have minus 95.26 minus 55J. So here is my matrix A. Here is my matrix B. And if I call this my matrix X, we can solve this equation using uh, MATLAB. All right, so I hope you understood this question. And if you have any questions for me, you can leave them in the comments down below. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.